Papa. I've come home to stay. The devil did you get here? I ran away, Papa. I ran away from that silly school. You stopped that foolishness. That's the best there is. Didn't you always say experience was the best teacher? Well, you never mind what I said. I sent you there, and that's where you're going to stay. Don't be mad, Papa. Please. It's just that I miss you so doggone well, you much. You watch your language, Missy. I sent you there so you'd be like your mama with learning and ladylike ways. You come back here looking like a ragamuffin boy. Sounding worse than one. Well, they was looking for a girl, so I fooled them for a fact. I'm not going back, Papa. I'm staying here with you. Don't you want me, Papa? Aren't you just a little glad to see me? Papa? You don't move, honey. Don't make one sound. Papa, you're hurt. You go fetch my rifle, honey. Did you shake a leg, Missy? Saddlebags over there. They're full of money. I want you to take them and hide them down in the root cellar. And you hide down there yourself real good. And don't you dare come up out of there under any circumstances. You understand? Not unless you hear me call you or them go away. That's why you weren't glad to see me. On account of them, the bad men. Yeah, honey. Same horse we've been a trailer, and there's blood on the saddle. I figure he's hurt real bad. Well, let's go. Now, Reese, that's a downright unfriendly way to go calling on a fella. You're just liable to get a real unfriendly reception, too. Well, what kind of etiquette would you two use to go calling on a train robber? You are the biggest conclusion jumper I ever saw. I've lost count of the times a captain has told you not to go off half cocked. Go, oh, I'm a half cocked conclusion jumper, huh? Right. But admitting your faults is the biggest step toward correcting them. Well, I ain't admitting nothing. Now, that express man, he shot one of them train robbers, didn't he? What the man said. All right, and you saw that blood on the saddle. Well? Well, what, Reese? That's circumstantial evidence. Pure and simple. Well, five will get you ten that that fella in there ain't pure or simple. Reese, there's more than a hundred ways for a fella to get himself hurt without being shot. Besides, that sign we found this morning after the rainstorm was one man. Now, there's supposed to be five or six of them in this here gang. Well, the way I figured, the way I figured, them fellas, they split up when that storm hit. Figuring on to meet up later. Well, Reese, even if you figure it right, and they were going to meet here, if we go busting in there, there's going to be a lot of shooting, and you're going to warn them all off. Well, uh, yeah, we might be able to take him without even firing one shot, depending on how bad he's hurt. You can't count on that, Reese. Well, now, looky here, Reese, with Chad and I here outside the barn, and you way up yonder on a hill, we're going to have him in a crossfire, ain't we? Well, now, who says I got to go? It's already rules, Reese. Well, now, that's a democratic way, part. Well, you'd better be right, because we're losing good light if you ain't. All right, now, look, if you see anything from up there, you better holler out. Call like a crow so we know it's you. Hoodow's more his style. <laughs> me, Cap? <laughs> oh. Come on. Jumper, huh? Well, what do you got to say now? Well, I'd say he's a pretty fancy shot. I'd say he's about an inch or two high. Oh, you do. Someday, so help me. <laughs>
You circle around. I'll keep him pinned down. Let's go. funny after all these years you got gunned down by a little old girl. Oh, now that's right. Hilarious. Just hilarious. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said to drop the guns. What might your name be, young lady? Might be anything. Now, if I had me, little girl like you, I'd think of a prettier name than that. She just kind of right sassy, ain't she, Chad? Mm. Just right sassy. And plumb out of patience. You know now, killing's a hanging offense, young lady. I think maybe we ought to save her from that fate, Reese. Let's put down the guns, huh? Girl, at that. Yeah, she wasn't so little that she didn't get the drop on the two of you. Oh, she's a wildcat, that one. And there wasn't any crying or tears. What did she get? Oh, 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 Yo! Oh, oh. Oh. Um. You let go of my puppet jobs on you! You heard him and I'll scratch your eyes out! Get off of me! What are you mad? <laughs> It's true, a female is deadly. Get off of me. I'd take a peach streak switch to your hide. She's trying to protect her paw. Must be him we've been following. He's the one that's telling us he always knows how to handle women. Look at him. Wait a minute. Let go of her. Tell her to let go of me. Whoa, young lady, stop it now. Papa! Papa! Papa, I'm sorry. I tried to help you. Are you all right? She gave more than she got. Fighting with somebody who can't fight back ain't fair, Missy. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, what would your mama think? But, Papa, you said that they were bad men, that they were after you. Well, I just made a little mistake, honey. These aren't the fellas I expect to come after me. Now, listen, young lady, you march right into that bedroom and get this here gentleman one of my shirts to replace the one you ruined. You sure you're going to be all right? I'm sure not. You just run along. Well, I better mosey along and keep an eye on her. See if she doesn't get the drop on the two of you again. <laughs> All right, now hand me your pistol nice and easy. Uh, thank you. I want to make a deal. Rangers don't make no deals. Rangers, huh? That's right. Well, there's no harm in trying. No sense in it, neither. Oh, yeah, there's sense in it. If you got a kid like her, she doesn't know what kind of devilment she's been mixed up in, and you don't want her to know. There's a lot of sense in it. <coughs> Take it easy, now. How bad you've been hit. Ah, that's so bad. Counting on the fact it hasn't been looked at yet. A <coughs> hundred to one, you fellas will never get me back to Laredo. Unless you're one of you is pretty good at doctrine. We better make that deal right here and now. Go no, ahead, no harm in listening. All I want is to get her out of here. I want her to be safe. Get her into town, get her on that train. I'm not leaving you, Papa. <coughs> Papa! 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 Uh, no, no, don't tell me. Uh... We're going to have to go ahead and choke on another one of your culinary concoctions, right? Real gourmet know this is a polis to draw out the poison. It come to think of it, it might help to use some on you and Reese. <laughs> oh, you're right. 
Thanks. Howdy. Didn't you never hear about a watched pot? Learn your doctrine in school? I never had much schooling. Learn this from a mescalero medicine man. Papa says the mescaleros are savages. <laughs> some. Just like some white men. Like the men who were after Papa. You got any idea who they might be? No. I wish I had. Well, I'd backtrack for a spell, but I didn't see any signs of anybody headed this way. Well, maybe, uh, maybe all that shooting scared him off. One thing for sure, from the way he was talking, somebody was gunning for him for sure. He doesn't look very good. <sighs> well, if you ask me, he was betting on a sure thing when he said we'd never get him back to Laredo. I don't know. Those Indian remedies that Joe knows are powerful potent. Water's boiling. <laughs> I reckon you got every reason not to trust me. But I got a feeling I can trust you, Mr. Riley. And I'm beholden to you for trying so hard to help my pa. All right, let's pour it in here. Not too much now. That's it. Not too much. It's got to go on real thick. Like that? Just a little bit more. Oh! Just right. You better stay right out here. You see, the one thing that a man doesn't like when he's hurting is having a bunch of people around. And this is gonna hurt something fierce. So now, if you hear him holler, you you just sit tight. But you go on the warpath again. Understand? Mr. Riley, I'm sorry for what I did, hurting your hand and all. Well, I reckon you figured you had good cause. But no way you'd know who we was. Besides, put my gun in anyway. Better hold him down, Reese. If you want to make yourself useful, Chad? Go up. Keep a mind off what's going on in here. I'll go. But try to keep him quiet. Yeah, it'd be rough on her if he started to raise a ruckus. Rough on her. I lost one shirt already today. I'm not going to try to take her two falls out of three. Uh, uh, hold on to him. Hold him steady. What you doing, Missy? Wishing on a star? Mm-hmm. Waiting's the hardest part, isn't it? Waiting and not being able to do anything to help. That's always the hardest part. I think what you want to do is get yourself off to bed and get some rest. I couldn't. Not till I know if Papa's gonna be all right. I wish there was something to do. I know what you can do. Why don't you go over there and brew up some coffee? And Joe and Reese and I have been riding for a lot of hours. It might help to keep us awake. I've been so busy worrying about Papa. Plum forgot about you being hungry. Fix you some supper. Well, you don't have to go to any bother. No bother at all. Mommy used to say Keaton busy made the time go faster. Yeah, it seems that way. She was always cooking something special or sewing or working in the garden. She'd hum while she worked. Papa said she was part hummingbird. Yard was all full of flowers when Mama was here. Now they're all dead. Like she is. Sorry to hear that, Missy. The doctor and the preacher, they said it was a blessing on account of the pain being so bad. Her name was Susanna. They wrote a song about her. Did they? At least always that's what Poppy used to say. He used to sing it when she used to get a little uppity. Oh, Susanna, gonna turn you across my knee. And then she'd say, you just try it, Mr. Mabry. You just try it. And then they'd get to laughing. Afterwards, Mom would always say, always marry a laughing man, Missy, because it makes the hard times easier. Mm. Papa never laughs anymore. Oh. Do you want something, Papa?
Papa? I... What you doing, still up? You get yourself plumb worn out. Couldn't sleep good for worrying. Yeah, I, uh, I guess not. But you're better off back in your own bed and, than setting up here. You get all cold and stiff. Now you go on back to your own bed and go on. There ain't nothing more we can do. We can pray. Pray? Yeah, I, uh, I guess so. Well, you, you go right ahead. Lord, I know you got a lot of real important things to see to. Reckon you already know what I got in my heart to say about Papa being bad hurt. I reckon surely you know he'd be a lot happier if he was with Mama. Only that'd leave me awful lonely without both of them. So, Lord, if it's all right with you, I wish you'd make Papa well again. Show me how to make him laugh again. I thank you kindly for listening. Amen. Catching cold, Mr. Bennett? Yeah, I... Seems like I am kind of choked up. Mama always kept some dried mint leaves in the cupboard. I'll just boil the water and you snip the steam. Well, now, you don't have to go to all that trouble. No trouble at all. You're being so kind and trying to help Papa. It's the least I can do. Sight to behold. Sound asleep. What an angel of mercy he turned out to be. Well, no better than he was sprouting wings. Now you see what you done. You went and woke her up. Hey, Papa. He was broke, Missy. He's gonna be all right. Oh, Joe, you're wonderful. You know what they say out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. Now, why don't you go out there and rustle up some breakfast? We'll have to be riding off soon. I'll get you some eggs. Thank you. What about him? It'll only take one of us to handle a wounded prisoner. Yeah, you. And no, I figured you'd do it. Why? Sure got a suspicious nature, doesn't he, Chad? Sure does. Try to give a man a couple of days off, just lounge around, not doing nothing, maybe get in a little fishing. All he's got to do is stick here to old maybe he's well enough to travel. Yeah. And then, then taking him in and, and breaking that little girl's heart when she finds out what a, what a no-account kind of fella he really is. Now, Reese, you know what the Indians say about never judging a man? Not until you've walked in his moccasins for a whole moon. I ain't interested in what the Indians say, and I ain't interested in what you say. Uh, uh, Kim. Where's Kim? She's out hunting up some breakfast eggs. She's out there all alone. You get her back in here. Here, oh. now, take it easy. Take it easy. You're going to bust that open again. Ah. First you tell us to get her out, and then you tell us to get her in. If Morgan ever gets a hold of her. Nick Morgan? Yeah. Uh, you ain't particular about the company you keep, are you? It wasn't easy to keep from going bad in Missouri after we came home from the war. There's a lot of bitterness, right or wrong. The law stood behind the winners. You're not trying to tell me that Morgan is just a poor, misunderstood victim of injustice. Like the James boys or the youngers? Just telling you how it was. Well, that was a long time ago. Another time, another place. I've seen Morgan in all these years. I got married. Came here, started working this place. I didn't run across Morgan until after Susanna died. Maybe if I had, we'd have had enough money to get her proper doctor, and we might have even been able to save her. Maybe you could have got killed to come close to it. It's worth taking the chance. I swore to myself my daughter would never want for nothing. She'd have the proper school and her pretty clothes. 
She'd have a darn good chance of growing up to be somebody. You figure she'd want all that if she knew it all came from stolen money? Uh, I figured she'd never find out. And it all worked out with Morgan. The night I was shot, he promised he'd send my share of the money to that school, along with a letter saying that I was killed in an accident. And I woke up and I heard him playing cards. They were gambling away my share, thinking I was a goner. Honor among thieves, huh? They were going to divvy it up in the morning, so I just played possum. I stole it all right from under their noses. The first thing they knew about it was when I stampeded the horses through the camp. Easy. Easy, man. But... Thanks. That's the deal I wanted to make with you fellas, the money and the Morgan boys, when they came to get it. If you get her out of here, safe. Well, I think if Morgan was coming, he'd have been here by now. That depends on how long it took him to round up the horses and pick up my trail. Well, there's no sense in getting saddle sore if he's headed this way. With all the money at stake and me getting the best of him, he'll come. And we'll be waiting. Mmm. What you cooking up, Missy? Chili. I never made it before. Joe told me how. It's his favorite. Mm. Smells good, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. That'll hit the old spot when Joe comes in off guard duty. You're still worried about him. Those men who are after Papa. I ain't worried at all. And don't you worry none, neither. Hey, you know what I found outside this morning? What? A rose bush. Now, I, I think with a, a little bit of love and a lot of water, it might bloom again next spring. Show me. Well, right after supper. Now, what did you have to go say a thing like that for? Hmm? Getting her hopes up. You know where he'll be next spring. And she can't stay here alone, and that's for sure. Reese, you're like the catfish calling the bullfrog Big Mouth. Who was it was outside fixing her swing today? That's Denman. Oh, and I heard you broke it, too, taking your turn. Oh, Joe had to go tell it, didn't he? Couldn't keep it to himself. Must have been some stunt to see. <laughs> Supper served. You gonna put on another show tomorrow, Park? <clears throat> Oh, let me help you with that. It's heavy. Thanks. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. does smell good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out why Papa didn't get the crops in this year. You suppose he's been sick and didn't tell me about it? Well, he, he just probably didn't want to worry you none, that's all. Mama knew. That's why she told me to come home. She told me Papa needed me here. I thought you told me that, uh, that your mother was dead, Missy. She comes to visit me sometimes. At night, when I'm asleep. Wonderful. <laughs> Aren't you hungry, Mr. Cooper? Yeah, sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just dig in, Chad? Just dig in. You ain't never tasted nothing like this in your whole life. Ah, this is the greatest. Yeah. Uh, Missy, I think I heard your father just call for you. I'll go see. Oh, boy, That's I bad, thought my huh? teeth was gonna melt. Oh, oh. Just delicious. I'll get you some more. Oh, well, <laughs> actually, I, I just don't think I could eat another bite. Oh, I'd I'd relish it, little man, but but I think we ought to think about old Joe. You know, after all, this is his his favorite dish. That's right. He's lucky to have friends like you. So are we. I wish I could figure out what's got Papa so worried. Well, uh, well, I think he wants you to go back to school, little man. Now that you know he's going to pull through, all right. He's got his heart set on you finishing school. And he's dead right. Did you finish school, Mr. Bennett? Who, me? Well, uh, no, not, not exactly, no. Uh, but old, old Chad here did, of course he did. But uh, old Joe and me, well, we just didn't. Well, nobody'd know except for a few things like that. You ought to say Joe and I. That's the rule they teach at school. Well, that's why you ought to go back, so you don't end up like Joe. Joe and I. Joe and me. 
But you just said that. The rule changes. Well, now, how are you supposed to learn if they keep changing things all the time? That's what I keep saying. So I think maybe both of you better go back to school. Listen to that old mockingbird. That's a sign of real good luck. Oh, not that one, honey. That's a sign of company coming. Now, you get in there with your daddy and stay quiet. Go on. Well? Oh, there you are. Money's all here, sir, every cent of it. And you can tell them railroad people they won't have no more trouble from that Morgan gang. Huh? I didn't see you bring them in. We buried them. Wiped them out to the last man, Captain. Who's going to take credit for killing him? Well, uh... Well... Can't none of us take credit for that, Captain. Uh, poor fella got shot by one of them. Oh, Captain, you never, ever seen the way them outlaws come after us. Why, it was a sight to behold, Captain. It was just if like we were... You'd like me to make what's bound to be a long story short, sir. I am not interested in making a long story short, Cooper. I want to know what happened to this man. Tell it. Well, uh... <laughs> Well, it's like to say, Captain, there's a little bit of bad in the best of us and a little bit of good in the worst of us. <laughs> you know what I mean. Skip the philosophy and stick to the facts, if that's possible. Well, the way I figured, Captain, Mabry had seen the right and wrong of it by the time we come along. Turned over the saddlebags of money he'd stole for Morgan to us. Told us they'd be coming after him. And sure enough, they did, Captain. Sure enough, they did. Only thing mattered to him was her being in danger and it being his fault. First time they come at us, we had them caught in the crossfire. Oh, there must have been 20 or 30 of them outlaws. A shouting and a shooting, a coming at us from all sides. And us spread thin. What with Chad being so sick, he was seeing double. <laughs> Got them both in one shot. I'll never believe it. I just know it. No, I ain't hit. You know what I can't figure out is why this chili didn't bother you or Joe none. Well, five will get you ten. You live through it. Odds ain't so good that we're gonna live through much more of that. I'm running low on shells. Oh. Well, I'd give a half a month's pay to know what kind of devilment old Morgan's cooking up. Fixing to cook you, that's what. I'm gonna try and fire the house. We should better get out of here. It's too late. Get in here fast. Come on. I'll take the bedroom window. Maybe we soak some blankets. Hey, chicken coops on fire. So is my stomach. Oh. Why, it was like fighting engines. Only a matter of time till one of them made it. Bedroom's on fire. Bring the blankets. Morgan just sat there waiting. Just to wait. Like a function. Fire was spreading. And we was running short of water. Messy, come here, little Messy. Come here, baby. Come here. There ain't a prayer stopping that now. Honey, you know that picture your mom on the mantle? You go fetch it for me, Missy. No, no, you go ahead, honey. Well, now that's a fool thing to do, sending her in there. Fire hasn't spread into there yet. It just smoked. I wonder out of here because you and I got plans to make. 
It's me Morgan wants, me and the money. Well, he won't want no witnesses, do oh, We got one chance. If I was to make a break out by the barn and back, I'd draw him off that way. Then you could take Kim out the other way, circle around. You oh. won't stand a chance. Will you listen to me, Bennett? Once in a lifetime, a man gets a chance to do something worthwhile, something that might make up for some of the wrongs he's done. So you gotta see it my way. If you had your own child, a kid like Kim, you'd know that it's worth dying. If she could just be safe. Reese, give me a hand with Joe. <laughs> Bye, Missy. It's better this way. He was just too mule-headed to give it up. A bean fell on his head. <coughs> Where's your daddy, Missy? Morgan, if you want that money, come and get it. Well, that doggone fool went and done it. Come on, Missy. We're getting out of here. Come on. No, Joe, this way. Oh, Captain, you ain't ever seen anything like the fight that man put up. Now, he may have been a fool. But he was a fighting fool, Captain. A fighting fool he was. Why, he, he he scooped up a gun from one of them fellas we had dropped, and he got he got six of them before he went down. Six of them. Can you imagine that, Captain? I guess uh, uh, the boys and me wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Mabry. Sounds like a candidate for a medal. Well, uh, would be kind of nice for Kim to have, Captain. The way she took on was just heart-rendering to see. But I... Reckon it's best he died without her finding out all them bad things he'd done. But he made up for it, Captain. He made up for him. Oh, the way he went out there, the way he went out there, Captain, is something I never could see and never will see in my whole life. I'm sure you won't. Uh, you two have anything to add? <clears throat> you disappoint me. No colorful touches. No mortgage on the old homestead. No girl tied to the railroad tracks. She didn't have nothing to do with it, Captain. Nothing to do with it at all. Reese, would you just never mind? Captain, you wanted to see Buckmeister. Well, if that'll be all, Captain. Oh, that is not all. You take a seat over there, and I'll deal with you when I get back. Wonder what's wrong. Same thing as always, your lies. Lies? Lies? Didn't Chad get sick? Didn't you get hit on the head? And wasn't there a fire? Uh, Reese, couldn't you just let us tell it? I, I swear, you and the Brothers Grimm. Well, I never heard of them, Jaspers. What do they want it for? Uh, uh. Captain, you know how Reese is. He's got this peculiar propensity. Now, you wait just one For making the truth minute. sound like it was exaggerated. You had your chance to talk, Cooper. Now, you listen while I tell all of you a little story. Once upon a time, there were three little rangers and six very big bad men. Count them, unless you have double vision or triple vision. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's far enough, Morgan. Throw down your guns. We're taking you in. Take for cover, boys. Bad men were no match for the Rangers. But then the Rangers were no match for one little girl. 
You smell something funny? Something burning. Listen, don't you bother yourself now. Ain't no real harm done. But that was your dinner. I made it special just for you. And then we'll just make ourselves some more, won't we? Come on now. Not gonna take long. There we go. I guess they don't exaggerate when they brag about you Texas Rangers. You know, that Morgan was no match for the three of you fellas. Well, I guess we just outnumbered it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you shoot better than you count, Mr. Bennett. Hey, Missy, that's just his way of bragging. You know something, honey? I have a prodigious thirst. A glass of that spring water, it sure tastes sweet. I'll get you some right quick, Papa. Thanks, honey. The nice little girl you got there. Yeah. Well, I guess you'll be taking me back tomorrow. Guess so. A sizable price on my head. We ain't no bounty hunters. I didn't mean that to be an insult. Just a shame to think about all that and reward money going to waste when it could be put to such good use. Rangers don't take no reward. Listen, Bennett, I'm not a man to get down on his knees and beg, but that's exactly what I'm doing right now. It ain't no use. But it's not for me, it's for Kim. She's got no place to go. She's got nobody to take care of her. Well, you, you should have thought of that a lot sooner. Reward money could buy her a whole new life. Or you could send her back to the school. Nobody's gonna send me away from you, Papa. I'm staying right here with you. Now you hush your fuss, Missy. The fact is, I ain't going away. See? Going away? But why? You love this place. Someday you'll understand, honey. I'm going with you, Papa. I can't take you where I'm going, honey. Can't, Papa? Or don't want to? Now, look, girl, don't make it any harder than it is. Where I'm going, I just can't take you. Chances are she's going to find out sometime anyhow. Be easier if you, if you tell her now. Hey, pretty thing, why don't you hop up here and sit next to me? I mean, the fact is that... Well, I've done some bad things, and now i got to pay for them. There's men that came here today, Morgan and the rest of them. I was one of them. But they were trying to kill you. I took some money from them. Some money I helped them steal from a train. Oh, Papa. It wasn't the first time I rode with them, either. Ever since Mama died, it was on account of that old school. You needed the money for that, on account of me. It wasn't that way at all. I took to stealing because it was an easy way to get hold of money. A lot easier than staying here, planting crops and harvesting them. I'm sure I could have hung on and done it the honest way, the hard way. But the fact is, I, I was just plain weak. I know better now. Oh, Papa. Now it's too late. You mind taking off your boots? Huh? Your boots. I expect a man to get a decent night's sleep with you clumping up and down and back and forth in your boots. Well, it beats me how you could sleep anyway. <laughs> I guess I just got a clear conscience, Reese. Well, I got something stuck in my craw, that's all. Yeah, me too. Must have been that chilly out yet. Do you find anything around here to fix your stomach up with? No, it ain't my stomach that's bothering me. <sighs> Reese, you can't sleep. Oh, you can't sleep? Well, well what you need, Reese, is... Uh... Nice big glass of warm milk. I'll fix you some. <laughs> what I need is a nice big bottle of hard liquor. I never figured I'd feel sorry for saving a man's life. Well, now, you ain't wasting all that worry on Mabry, are you? No, no, not him at all. I'm worried on account of little Kim. Just pains me to break that little girl's heart. Shucks, Reese, I, 
I know what you mean, but I don't see what we can do about it. The law's the law. Well, there, there ought to be something we could do. You know, a doctor once told me if you gotta make a cut, do it fast with a sharp knife, and it hurts less that way. Mm. Chad's right. The quicker we get it done, the easier it's gonna be. Well, I wouldn't expect either one of you two to give nobody a break unless there was something in it for you. You talk like it's us that done something wrong. But she ain't done nobody no wrong. Well, we know that, Reese, but that doesn't excuse her father. Have you forgotten that this man held up four banks and robbed the Missouri Pacific Railroad? No, I ain't forgotten. I ain't forgotten at all, but that ain't the point, blast it. What's going to happen to her? What's going to happen to her? She's going to wind up in an orphan's home. That's what's going to happen. You ever been in the inside of one of those places? Able to sleep nights just just thinking about her being in a place like that. Well, look, maybe, maybe the court will go easy on him if he if he tells him that he did it all on account of her. No, that ain't what he's gonna say at all. He spelled it out for her. spelled it right out. Didn't do no good. She she holds herself to blame for it. Well, there's not very much we can do about that, is there? Man's got to pay for his crimes. Well, our only job is to take him into Laredo. That's it, and that's all. See, Risa, Ranger can't afford to get soft hearted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ranger ain't supposed to have no heart at all. Well, maybe it's time that I just quit. Might not be a bad idea to resign. Find myself a, a good woman and get married. Because I can adopt little Missy and take her away from that orphan's home. Yeah. Yeah. Might not be a bad idea at all. How would you like a glass of warm milk? The first little ranger felt obligated to save the child from that fate, so he decided to get sick. So sick that Joe would have to go to town to fetch the doctor, leaving Reese alone. Then he'd throw a spell that would keep Reese so busy they could escape undetected. And strangely enough, the second little ranger had exactly the same notion. Of course, he did his duty by warning Mabry that if he ever got into trouble again, he'd settle his hash personally. Oh. 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 But the third little ranger, being the observant type, saw no reason for that long, tiresome ride. So he arranged a rather clever device to avoid the ride and any suspicion of soft-heartedness on his part. You can imagine the surprise and shock at the discovery that their prisoner had escaped. Escaped? Well, how'd you ever let him do a thing like that? Well, how did you two let him sneak by you? On account of him having some kind of fit. Ooh. Well, I got five dollars says he's a faking. You mean to tell me he did it on a purpose? Well, if the chili was bad, how come the two of us ain't sick? Well, I don't prove nothing. You two must just have cast iron stomachs. And besides, you're wasting a lot of time. You ought to be out chasing mm -hmm. after him. <laughs> Old head spinning like a squirrel cage. Mm. Well, I'm afraid it's gonna be up to you, Reese. Well, I reckon Missy's been talking to the Lord again. Ha <laughs> ha! Ain't no chance of tracking in this kind of weather, I'll tell you that. No, sir, Reese. All right, Reese. I'll tell you one thing. It's gonna be your funeral. What do you mean, my funeral? Well, the captain ain't never gonna settle for an excuse like that. You can't firmly he's gonna be frogging at the mouth. You let something like a little old thunderstorm stop you. Why, uh, a ranger's supposed to go after his man. He's killed or captured. Well, I guess there's only one way to end it, then. Best way, to Kill him. Kill him! <laughs> And 
so the three little rangers rode off, figuring everybody was going to live happily ever after. Must be a mind reader. That presupposes there is a mind to be read. Now, of all the mush-headed chicken hearts... Now, you just hold on one minute, Captain. Just because we're rangers don't mean we ain't human. If you'd ever met up with that little kid... I have met her. And her father, when he turned himself in. Figured being on the run all the time, looking over his shoulder, wouldn't be good for Missy. Wanted a fresh start. Wanted to make sure you wouldn't get in any trouble. You sure picked a funny way to do it. You knew all the time what happened, didn't you? Yes. And you let us hang ourselves for it? Yes. Now, Captain, that ain't fair. Ain't fair. Aiding and abetting the escape of a wanted man. Coming in here with a cockeyed collection of pious prevarications. You pulled some slippery shenanigans in the past, but this is the top. I ought to throw the book at you. If I hadn't promised Missy... Uh -huh. Oh, 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 just <laughs> what did you promise? I didn't promise anything. I uh, said I'd think about it. I said I might give you all another chance uh, under certain conditions. Oh, that's mighty kind of you, Captain. Sure was persuasive, wasn't she, Captain? Persuasion had nothing to do with it. It just so happens that I have an assignment that you three are eminently qualified for. It's a dirty, thankless job. Nobody volunteered for it, and if you three think you can handle it... Yes, sir, yes, Captain. Sir. Yes, sir, Captain. You volunteering? Yes, sir, Captain. In that case, you get first crack the new equipment. You mean them new rifles we've been expecting? Just open a case. <laughs> See you around the stables, boys. <laughs> yeah.